Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye bye. This is our wine cellar. Uh huh. As you can tell by the weather, we don't make wine here in Ireland because of, there's no consistency in the temperature. Yeah. So we hold on to any winemaker that goes abroad. And these are some Irish American winemakers, mm -hmm. predominantly in the Napa Valley in the US of A. The most famous would have been the Chateau Montalena, mm -hmm. made famous in 1976 at the Judgment of Paris when it won Best Chardonnay in the world. It put Napa wines on the map and it sent ripples through the wine world because it beat all the French Burgundies. Mm -hmm. And the connection there, it was owned then and still owned by an Irish family, the Barrett family, and run by the Beau Barrett now. Okay, thank they you. Some, he's got the Irish wine geese, as in the bird. Yeah. So after a famous battle here in Ireland a couple of hundred years ago, the Irish Catholics were on the losing side of a battle. Yeah. And they were told to live under certain laws or leave. So 14,000 of them left and they went and settled in France, in Bordeaux, around Bordeaux. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of them started smuggling wine back to Ireland and French ships and didn't want to write their Irish names on the ship's manifest and they were just wrote as the wild wine geese. Oh, and any of them that survived their adventures at sea and returned to France, some of them would have bought uh, vineyards and some would have married into French wine growing families. And one of the most famous and most local here, Chateau Lynchbage, the Polyc region in Bordeaux. The Lynches are from Galway city, 23 miles south of here, and their castle still remains there in the centre of the city. It's an AIB bank, it's a bank at the moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you've got the Dillon, the Clarks, the McCarthys, and one of the oldest cognac houses in the world, uh, Hennessy Brandy, Hennessy Cognac. They're an Irish family also from the south of Ireland, from County Cork. Thank so you. Irish winemakers abroad that did good. Very good. So I'll just take you down to the centre now, here's a couple of steps. Yes, thank you. Very nice. So the oldest foundations in the castle date back to 1228. Where we're situated at the moment, it's in the 1750s it was built. And this was built as a servant's entrance to come into work underground. The rooms to your left and right where the wines are, that went six feet deeper and that was used for storing coal. Temperature is? Hmm? Temperature it is? The temperature is temperature controlled, so we have it about 12 degrees now. But because of limestone, it's yeah. a natural limestone area for yes. temperature. So our systems are in place to kick in if there's a spike in temperature up or down. This lay dormant for years, but we always had to make a perfect wine cellar. Our previous owners didn't have the vision of the investment to convert it onto their current owners, the Tolman family of Red Carnation. And because they own a vineyard in South Africa, they could see the potential. So Mr. Tolman wanted to see this. There was no lights down here. Yes, there was stalactites tights coming 18 inches from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. There was four and a half ton of coal in the pits either side. And they put in some temporary lighting. It was like seeing it when he removed it. And Mr. Thomas had converted. So when we did our renovations, they unearthed it from the outside, sealed it with a membrane, took the coal out, brought the floor levels up, took the control of the rooms. You've got your white to your left and whites and sparklings to your right. Yes, very really nice. nice. We've got our tasting room here to the left and then our reds to the right. Yes, I see. People can hire out this room also for private dinners. It's a nice setting for a dinner. Mm -hmm. You can leave your thing here. We'll yeah, thank you. We'll be going back up in a few moments again. Yeah. yeah. So the second room here to your left also, and then the reds are all running all the way from the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Now I'll just take you over here for a moment. I'll show you the tunnel. You know, it's the change in Eagly. temperature. Eagly. The, these are the protectors of the cellar. Yeah, that's why yes, I asked. They look after our cellar. Very nice. They don't drink alcohol, so they're safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the tunnel. It's like in the rabbit hole, it gets lower as you go down. The gate at the very end is one of the oldest gates here since the 1700s. I would say this is. The natural temperature. We have constant nothing fresher than fresh air, so we have constant fresh air coming in, rotating around. Because first and foremost, it's a working cellar. So, like if you're a cellar, 
you'd always get that like a damp smell yeah. like in storage and packaging. You get that here. So we have constant air rotation because people come and do wine tastings. They have some cheese. Yeah. They can have a dinner. So you have yes. constant air rotating. Yeah. So the coal used to come down from Galway City on a barge on the lake. We brought it across the pier. And this is outside the main reception door where you come in. The coal used to be dropped down, down here and slide into a, a cart. And they, they tip the cart into the pits. And then the servants would come in underground and take their bucket of coal up to the different furnaces. And back then there was 44 working fireplaces in the house. So it's a great piece. These would, would have been used on the estate over little gateways. So like they would like put a, a lamp, like a torch, mm -hmm. like a fire or a candle beneath it. So if you're walking along over little pathways and you looked up, it's like a child shining a torch with a flicker of your you'd fall off and you'd run away. Yeah. So they're yeah. protectors. So they're here now to the protectors of the wine cellar. Yeah. Very good. We also have some cotton these are original prints of the Mouton Rochtai label. Mm -hmm. So back in 1855, when they did the classification for first growth wines, this vineyard just missed out. And like a lot of things, it was to do with politics. And it wasn't re-established, it wasn't re 